What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about my four favorite exercises that help build functional strength and power for jujitsu. Now all four of these movements will directly correlate with movements to jujitsu. Movements that you will see while you're sparring, movements that will help you while you're sparring. I really like to make direct connections from my weightlifting to my jujitsu because I feel those are the most practical and usable. In a previous video, we've already talked about my opinions on meshing jujitsu with bodybuilding. I'll drop the link up here in case you wanna check that out. But the whole idea of this series is to maximize jujitsu performance through weightlifting. Now, obviously things like actually sparring are probably going to be the most beneficial for you in increasing jujitsu performance. But who doesn't want that strength edge? Jujitsu was designed for the smaller, weaker person to beat the larger, bigger person. But if you can increase your strength through specific exercises exercises that will directly correlate to your performance in jiu-jitsu, now we're talking. So without further ado, let's jump into my four favorite exercises in the gym I use to improve jiu-jitsu strength. Exercise number one, the Zercher squat. If you've never tried this variation of the front squat before, I highly recommend this. Because you're holding the bar in the crook of your arms, the center of gravity is going to sit a little bit lower on your torso, which translates excellent to say, starting on your feet in jiu-jitsu. Maybe you've got a body lock and you're working for a takedown. You're gonna get a lot of posterior chain development from this. You're gonna get a lot of leg development from this. And this is so good, especially when you're starting neutral on your feet, just like you would in any competition, or even when you're in a situation where you may be in a fight on the street. Now, if you're someone who's an avid squatter, be prepared to use a little bit less weight, maybe a lot less weight if you've never done this before than you do on your normal squats. Remember, the weight isn't sitting on top of your spine now, it's in front of your spine. So you need to engage your back to keep that weight from pulling you forward all the while squatting down into a nice level parallel squat position. In fact, I try to get a little bit lower than parallel on this just because I like to get a deep range of motion in my legs. Getting that full range of motion is important to me because I do feel that it improves my performance on the mats drastically. If I'm gonna work out my muscles, I want them to be strong through the entire range of motion. You will see in one of the exercises we talk about today, we are not using full range of motion, but that's on purpose. Here with the Zercher squat, you wanna get full range of motion, and that will help you get the very most out of this exercise. And if you are new to the Zercher squat, I highly recommend starting light and getting the form down. You need to keep your back rigid. You don't wanna round out. You wanna round in as much as possible. And if you need to, use a weight belt. There's nothing wrong with that. You're going to see this is a reoccurring theme for me where I'm recommending exercises to you that you may have never tried before. I want you to start light. Set your pride aside. It doesn't matter how heavy you go. You need to get the form down correctly first so you don't hurt yourself. Because as you build a platform and as you build your foundation and you begin to get stronger, you wanna make sure you're utilizing good form throughout this entire experience, this entire journey. Because if you start getting stronger and you're still using bad form, that's where devastating injuries happen. And again, our health is our number one priority. I want you to stay healthy and I want you to stay injury free. All right, the second exercise is going to be barbell hip thrusts. And I think it's pretty easy to see how this correlates to jujitsu performance. Being trapped in mount or in side body or when someone's trying to transition into mount from knee on belly, I can't think of any circumstances where having a strong bridge is going to hold you back. You'll notice in this variation, I'm using a bench. Again, putting my ego and pride aside, there's there's nothing wrong with using a pad to protect your hip bones from being grinded on by a barbell. The whole purpose of weightlifting is to get more out of my jujitsu. And if I bruise my hips from not using a pad doing hip thrusts, well, that's really counterproductive. So I have no problem using this. I highly recommend that you use one as well. It doesn't mean you're any less of a man or a woman. Go ahead and use the pad. There's nothing wrong with that. And if you watch this movement, you'll notice that all of my shoulder blades from top to bottom are on the bench behind me. This is the landmark I use to determine I'm in the proper position. If you take a look at my feet, you'll notice that when I'm in full extension, my upper leg and my lower legs almost make a 90 degree angle. In fact, I'm a little bit beyond 90 degrees. I'm probably closer to 95 degrees. This is another indicator I look for that I'm in the correct position. Being that I'm an online coach, I do see people frequently not go to full extension on these and I'm going to recommend that you drop the weight so that you can go into full extension. I don't care if there's some girl on the other end of the gym doing four plates and you're only doing two like I am here. I don't care. You need to do this with correct form. I want you to get the most out of this. If you're doing little four inch thrusts because you've got too much weight on there, you're not really getting anything out of this. I want you to get this full range of motion and specifically in this exercise because that's where a lot of your power is going to come from. If you're practicing good range of motion on this exercise, you will notice an improvement in your bridging, especially at the top or the end of the range of motion. Bridging can be one of your greatest tools when you're stuck in a bottom position. So once again, use the correct amount of weight here. Start off light till you get the form down and then work your way up. Okay, this next exercise is one of my favorites and that's the floor chest press. Again, 
again, watching this, I think it's pretty easy to see how this correlates to jujitsu. What I'm not saying here is that this is a great exercise to help you bench press people off of you when you're stuck in a bottom position. That's not exactly a technique I aim to use, but there are situations in jujitsu where we're on our backs and we need pressing power to get ourselves to a better position. The main difference between this and a normal bench press, when you're on a normal bench press, your elbows are gonna drop below your body line. Whereas when you're on a floor press, your elbows hit the floor. You can't go any deeper than that. And that's exactly what happens when we're practicing jujitsu. That floor creates a very solid backstop. If you're someone who benches regularly, you may notice that when you're benching at the bottom of the range of the motion, you may get this rebound effect on the way back up. These floor presses are great because it totally eliminates any kind of a rebound effect. On the eccentric movement or on the way down, your upper arms hit the floor. You have to stabilize and then come up from there. What's really cool about the floor chest press is that it'll also help you with your sticking point on your bench press. So you may notice that when you're benching on a standard bench, normally right around 50 to 60% of the way up, you normally hit a wall. So the floor chest press is great for getting past these sticking points because your starting point is just under that sticking point on the standard bench press. And you're really gonna experience a nice squeeze in your pecs from this. And to top it all, it's also really easy on your shoulders. Right now I'm kind of working with a left shoulder injury. When I use the standard bench press, my shoulder screams. So I avoid any kind of sharp pain that I'm gonna feel in my joints at all times. But the floor chest press, I experience no pain whatsoever. So this is a great option to keep your shoulders safe and to work on a functional exercise that directly correlates to jujitsu strength. And just like before, start light and practice good form. You'll notice that my legs are laid flat. I'm not pushing off my feet at all, totally relying on my upper body. Give this one a shot, I think you'll like it. Last but certainly not least, gi pull-ups. Now the pull-up is already a fantastic exercise to build upper body strength, but what's one way we can really up the ante here and get the most out of this for our jiu-jitsu? You use a gi top for your grips. So all you're gonna need is your gi top and a pull-up bar. And if you don't have a gi top, you can use a towel as well. I like to use the gi top because not only do I practice no gi jiu-jitsu, I like to practice in a gi as well. And this is very realistic for the type of grips I'm gonna be aiming for on my opponent's lapel. And the configuration of the pull-up bar really doesn't matter. You're always gonna find a way to be able to get your gi top tied to the bar so that you can do pull-ups on it. So by doing gi pull-ups, not only are you getting that functional pulling power from doing the pull-up itself, you're also significantly increasing your grip strength, which I think we can all agree on is important for jiu-jitsu. If you can't do a pull-up just yet on your own, don't stress, I got you covered. You can get some exercise bands off of Amazon and this will assist you in completing a pull-up. And you can still use the gi grips with the exercise band helping you. And if you've been training jiu-jitsu for a while, you can probably think of that one guy at your gym that has that iron grip, that grip that once he gets a hold of your gi, the hand's not coming off, at least without a fight. Well, you start practicing these gi pull-ups and you will slowly become this guy. A lot of people don't realize what an asset a good grip is until they actually develop a good grip. And that is such a powerful tool for you and it's such a pain in the butt for your opponent to deal with. So get your gi pull-ups in. Even if you have to use exercise bands to help assist you with doing pull-ups, there's nothing wrong with that. We set our ego aside so that we can get the performance we want. Remember, just like being a white belt, you're not gonna be a beginner forever. As long as you stay consistent, you keep working at this, you will get stronger and you will get better. I think we can all agree that technique is king in jujitsu, but if you can add strength to the equation, you're really setting yourself up for success. A guy who has good technique and no strength versus a guy of similar skill with more strength, well, guess who's probably gonna win that match? The guy with the strength. So if you can get an edge anywhere you can, strength being one of those, by all means, let's get that edge. Strength is definitely an asset when it comes to jujitsu, but I also think it's important to not use it as a crutch to skip over your techniques. You're only gonna make it so far relying on just strength. So to become the most well-rounded and developed jujitsu fighter that you can be, I think it's important to focus on technique while using strength as an asset or a tool when it applies. And that's the video, guys. I hope you got something out of it. I do have plenty more of these jujitsu-based exercises that I love to use. So expect to see more videos on this in the future. And let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what you would change. What would you add? What would you take away? We can all learn a little something from each other. So let's have that discussion. Let's grow together. That's what this channel is all about. And in the meantime, eat plants, train hard, and feel good. I'll see you in the next one.